Welcome back, everybody. It's time to move on in the Smite Console League to the other end of Europe. We're going to move into Xbox after watching out Cold Dispatch VGS Gods. And joining me here on the desk, we've got Taco. Taco, this one, Rival, I mean, anytime we see Rival, they're going to be a favorite. That's just kind of the way it's been. It's, it's tough not to give the favorite to Rival, though, when you factor in just how much experience this team has alone. And not only that, but they're just clear standouts in each of their roles individually. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the Jellyfish boys are going to have uh, their work cut out for them here. No doubt about that. Rival, w after receiving back 50-meter fly, he's back in the mid lane for them, is a team that I think we're just looking to see how they can hit their stride and get ready towards the World Championships. Yes, they still have Dabo Disciples to worry about in their own region, but games like this, we expect them to win with relative ease. I think even if you are rival, you have to take these kind of sets home. You can't leave room for debate if you expect to have solid performances once you qualify for those land periods. Completely agree with you, and this is just good opportunities to test some things out in picks and bands and make sure that you have some compositions ready to go whenever it's time for the big dance. But up until then, We've got their opponents ahead of us. We're ready for picks and bans for game number one. And we've seen a lot of different things happen after that midseason patch. I mean, a lot of teams seem to be pretty split on what actually works. I, I do think that taking away some early pressure picks, though, could bode really well here for Team Jellyfish because leaving open selection choices like the Thor for Rapio seems yep. a little bit too risk versus reward oriented. Agreed. And Isis, you know, got to take that away from 50 meter fly. You've got a lot of boxes you have to check against Rival. That's what makes them so difficult to play against. Erlong Shen, the first ban here for Rival, something that we've seen a lot of teams either really heavily prioritized or not value whatsoever. Kind of a weird god in that instance. Rival just seemed really interested in trying to take away a lot of those backline dive members from Jellyfish here. Looking to try and keep their team fights a little bit more compact because Jormungand are great at displacing a bunch of those backlining carries. And the Ares takeaway as well feels a little bit support focused so far, or at least frontline focused for sure from Rival. Without a doubt, everyone looking at that frontline capability. No Thor ban by Team Jellyfish, and you mentioned that right away. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where Rapio goes with this first pick selection. I mean, you've got a couple top tier picks well, open still, five, AMC five, being one like of them. Bee. And Rival do end up going with the AMC instead of the Thor. Jellyfish could possibly look to respond with that on her. We have been seeing a lot of on her in that mid lane position, but the set instead gonna be made the directive here for Jellyfish, and I like this, has a lot of ambiguity behind it as well. Rival not having as much information on this Jellyfish roster as what Jellyfish probably has on Rival. Well, Jellyfish go with the two gods that were released hand in hand with one another, Set and Horus. Those are two pretty good ones. They pair pretty well on the same team. Rival certainly not too upset, it seems like, though. AMC Merlin, two phenomenal first two picks, Excalibur. and then King Arthur right Strike. after that. I'm sure Rival's not too upset. I'm a big fan of the Merlin King Arthur responses, though, into Jellyfish's set Horus, because one thing that Horus definitely seems to be a little bit more reliant on is that execution factor. And when you're trying to initiate with some of those dashes and look for those clean knockups, Merlin has that arcane stance that can be very punishing. Same for Pyro and Ice, in all honesty, and King Arthur as well. He just has so much survivability with his self sustain alone. G Team Jellyfish might have some issues getting some good anti heal options going. Man, I mean, it, it, you see one end, the, the two gods that are tied together so tightly in the lore set Horus, and you just have to go Merlin Arthur. You know, the only two that can compete in that in that same direction. Smart plays here by Rival for sure. Poseidon rounds out the first half for Team Jellyfish, and then they look towards some frontliners of their own for the second ban phase in Geb and the Cabracken. Cabracken, though, has been seeing a lot of play as of late and has looked fairly potent. The Tremors in the early game as well, I think, just has such solid lane clear. And for a lot of frontliners that like to just harass the junglers to prevent them from going through their natural jungle pathways, no, it's just too no, much of a slug, too much frustration. And Poseidon would have also struggled pretty heavily up against that Kabrakan. But the Alquang is a, a little bit of a flare pick here, Agro, because you already see Set locked in. So I would probably anticipate this AO to be intended for the jungle, but it's just such low pressure in the early game. And somehow Thor manages to make it through to fourth pick. Yeah, I wonder if Team Jellyfish are going, oh man, we hate we hate Feel forgetting about blessing. a god like that. Thor, Terra, two really solid picks to round out Rivals Draft. They, they got really a great composition, I think, on their end. Team Jellyfish have a lot of 
picks that you see a lot getting banned, so that makes me think that it that it feels pretty good for them. But at the same time, I don't think Set and Alquang work that well together. Horus and Poseidon work great together. I love that combo. But I just don't think that Jellyfish has that same cohesion that Rival's draft has. I feel like it's going to be tough for, for Jellyfish to even deal the damage to Rival with that Osiris being locked in as well. Traditionally speaking, I guess it can look okay on paper, but there's so much of an AoE presence from Rival. Yes. I just don't even understand how Jellyfish manages to get close without taking huge chunks of their HP first. That's a great point. They have no range, really, on on this setup in this, ra in this draft, I should say. So Team Jellyfish have a tough task ahead of them. Rival, on the other hand, really looking good, I'd say, as we're getting ready to start game one here. I mean, they've got tons of AOE damage and the ranged poke. We'll see if it's enough for them to take the game. Let's throw it to the casters. Hey, I'm going to catch it. Thanks, Agro. Thanks, Taco. Tom and Tully on the cast. TNT, you can call us. So we're dynamite. Rival versus Jellyfish. How are you feeling about this one, Anatoly? I'm excited because it's Rapio on his signature Thor with the changes in the midseason. Now receiving a little bit of chain lightning added bonus effect Ooh. after that Anvil of Dawn. So we should see him really pop off, which is important up against an Al Kwong on the other end. That's very true. Jam on the Camel is going to be coming through. And when we watch Al Kwong, he's a feast or famine type character. Sure. I think the most popular Al Kwong as of late, specifically in the non-pro leagues. Obviously, Johnny on Flashpoint in the Spite Minor League. So what do we expect to see out of the Al Kwong? Some early game action or late game action? Probably a lot of late game action. If there is any early game presence from the Al Kwong, it's got to be some ganks in this duo lane, right? Because you got to set up against an Amusin Cobb. Obviously, Seth's going to be looking for those kills. A little bit of extra security in an Al Kwong wouldn't hurt. That's really that, that that's really where I was going to go. I was actually thinking more about the middle lane as the blue buff invade comes out unsuccessful. Blue buff confirmed by predators. I'm really looking at this this middle lane uh, for a 60 meter fly here. Want to see how safe he'll be on the Merlin. Predator is getting low though. This fight really bringing it down. Zoro with a big Z puts one up for Team Jellyfish. I mean, that fight, you just can't die there. No, you definitely can't. There's so many things that favor out Jellyfish. Number one, it's an Osiris. Like, he's the most dominant, one of the most dominant level one slash twos that you ever want to have on your team. Number two, the weakness of the level one Terra. Essentially not providing much to anything. But, you know, who can provide something is Rapio on the backside. Rapio is looking more for the, the other play, the outside play, though. Grabs the enemy blue buff, the nice invade. Team Jellyfish was just kind of pushing up on the tower. And so because of that, Rapio is able to go ahead and grab the experience and, of course, the buff from the blue buff. And that'll leave Team Jellyfish a little bit empty-handed. There's just so much good things that a Horus can provide in those early little scuffles. The knock-up into the basic attack afterwards to shred those protections and slow you down. Davey! Missing the one basic attack. Might have been a kill. It was really close considering that the set was having a health potion tick. Set is a character that this is a very scary lane for Set. I actually think I prefer Set in the solo lane, but when it comes to this uh, this this carry roll Set, Set can absolutely destroy in the 1v1. Here, not so much. So it's up to Visify to really kind of get his, get his ducks in a row, get some farm online, and then once the ultimate Kingslayer comes out, he can really kind of just delete Davy and walk him down and just run this lane. That's the game plan here for the set. That's his ace in the hole. That's the only thing he can really rely on effectively because he's going to get out pushed. He's going to get out cleared. And if he doesn't have jungle assistance, he's going to lose his purple buff on top of that as Davy can easily start abusing this matchup, constantly denying gold under the tower. Visify going to be struggling, I think, especially when Davy does hit level five for the cripple. There's a little bit of a heal, but in general, this Horus could be in trouble, especially with the rotation from Dinosaur. Beautiful wall. It cuts off every exit. And Team Rival answer back very quickly to Team Jellyfish. Tie game. Unfortunate for Trevor. He didn't have the positioning to dash into safety. Jemmel a little bit too far away to use that as an assistant. So they did lose their own blue buff, but they're able to at least strip away another one in response and kind of answer back for giving up that first blood. Here comes a Kraken. That'll secure the blue buff for Team Jellyfish. A lot of investment there for it. But Zoro will get his mana buff, thankfully. 
Z Zoro will... No, he actually didn't because... Oh, it didn't even secure no. with, the, with the Kraken? Not even with the Kraken, oh, Tom, my unfortunately. What, you would think, right, with the highest assume, my bursty fault. damaging abilities, wow. you don't get the kills, you might get the buff kill, but... There's always that small window with the gold furies where it's like <laughs> you mistime it there. Not too surprising to see it on the blue buff occur again. It's wild. Team rival now. Successful on the invade, successful on the invade before that. Able to answer back with a kill down by their own blue buff. Things are going their way right now, Tully, but Team Jellyfish has done a good job to get first blood. So the game remains even up until this point. Al Kwong check in. Hasn't backed just yet. Predators check in. Died already once. Goes to the left. That can be it. Sickle strike. Oh, the minions are providing the last hit. He tried to use this ultimate to get under the tower, but he wasn't in his orange stance to use that as a mobility. Instead, he sundering strikes towards the tower and did nothing, essentially. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was him misjudging if he was in the wrong stance or if he tried to 180 right. and Sundering Strike for the stun and get more tower shots. But either way, Predator is now with his second death in five minutes of the game. This is kind of his style where he's super aggressive. He loves to fight. Sometimes he'll carry as a result, but then other times this kind of will happen when he gets behind and then the opponents start to become the bully instead. So here for Davey on the AMC, really no questions. We know what this guy is going to bring. We see it time and time again. In fact, everybody on Team Rival, this is a very meta composition, I feel like. Dinosaur on the Terra, a little bit flavor. We see Terra a little bit less, but Dinosaur's Terra is kind of, that's what he brings, man. And so with that in mind, you know, Team Rival just kind of leverages this, this just strong cop. Team Jellyfish should know what's coming, but they're still kind of playing into it. Red buff taken by Predators this time around. Now the all-in team fight. Kraken will come through. That's goodbye to the solo lane. Three in total for Team Jellyfish. Rapio lands around the backside trying to save his support. But the execute not good enough. Dinosaur blows one up. And now on the run. A very important kill because Dinosaur was in the execute nice threshold. Nice that would have been easily a two for nothing. But instead, at least making it a one for one at the end of the day. Predators, though, with his third death, but still somehow managing to have the experience lead over Zoro. I mean, that was a crazy engagement looking at how this one went. I mean, realistically, <laughs> Dabble should have gotten that kill. He should have. But Dino just a little bit too fast. You, you got to respect it. And the thing was, Rapio missing his ultimate still was uh, doing presence in the background with the effects of the chain lightning after landing, right? The Berserker right. Barrage, the basic attacks. It spread out the, just enough damage to kill Jamal before that execute occurs. Because if he catches Dinosaur in the, that, all of a sudden it becomes a two for nothing. And then when you get that health restoration, you're coming in for that third kill on top oh, of yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that quickly spins out of control. In fact, that, that's exactly kind of what I was getting at when I was bringing up, you know, different players playing this character. And we don't see it always because it is a truly feast or famine. Thor, if Rapio, let's say in, we're in a weird alternative universe and Rapio's bad at the game and he's 0-5-0. He's still laying down walls and initiating with the ultimate. There's sure. still something you can do. Uh, if your Al Kwong is 0, 5, and 0. Uh. <laughs> it depends on your build. It could be the old school season two dirty bubble build where you go pure tank, gem of isolation, and you're just essentially slowing people. Yeah, you're, like, you're, 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 you're a slow execute bot, which, you know, even still, you finally have something to do. But if you're a glass cannon Al Kwong sitting at 0 and 5, good luck trying to get those kills with a couple items behind. Davey here, good luck trying to get out of there. Magical Trevor coming through. Getting the kill here, number four. Oxley, the second. Looking for Oracles. Finding them. Early vision on the Gold Fury belongs to Team Jellyfish. They have an early 1,000 gold lead. A little shy, but if they kill Fly, it certainly would have accomplished that. But Oxley might be the one in trouble. Uh -oh. Rapio up. Rapio is looking for the mid lane kill. He wants it. He's going to actually predict the juke and even hammer away from the Tier 1 tower. I love Dinosaur there. Tanking the tower for his jungler there every step of the way, man. Love to see the teamwork. Dinosaur. Dinosaur has been the... Everybody... Listen, I have, I've, I've yelled Rapio's name going back five years, man. 60 meter fly. 
Remember, I used to be on 60 millimeter fly and called this guy. Well, he was 50 millimeter fly first. Oh, so he has grown. Yes. Well, he was 50 meter fly. And I called him millimeter fly yeah, for, yeah. I think, a full year taking him from a large creature to a small one. Anyway, my point is that a lot of these guys on Rival, Predators, Davey, these guys have gotten a lot of time in the spotlight. Dinosaur, I feel like, very rarely is a support player. You know, superlatives less for support. But he's just consist consistently kind of showed up, done his job. You can expect him to play on the Terra, Kumba Karna, and he'll do it. You know, and I think that's really respectable for Ooh. somebody who's reliable this that. Good stuff from Trevor. Prevents the cripple or the dash root, but doesn't matter anyway because the damage over time from Fly just enough to kill Oxley. And you were talking about a dinosaur and his ability to be consistent. It's his positioning. Whether it's offensive right there where he gets the kill or defensively where he saves Rapio's life by getting yeah. the tower aggro, by stunning out those two members after they use their ultimates to chase out the Thor. He's just there where he needs to be. He does the fundamentals really well. I think that there are definitely, you know, some supports that come to mind. If I'm looking for a highlight reel, probably not Dinosaur I'm calling up. You know, if I'm if I'm getting, you know, the list of the top guys with the biggest plays, probably not Dino. But if I want a guy that's gonna do exactly what a team like Rapio, Fly, Davey, and Predators need around me, that's Dinosaur, man. Him and his team go ahead and confirm the Gold Fury. First word of the contest. They're able to tie the kill lead as well. 1,600 or just about. But the bite back is gonna come by way of Kraken, and it do not matter. Trevor, ever so clever, falls to the wayside. Mid lane, 60 meter fly, 10 meters larger and 10 meters stronger. Yeah, look how little damage Rapio took off of that ultimate from Dinosaur. Timing the Earth and Fury right as the Kraken was coming out to mitigate at least 5% of that damage. This level 10 Thor, very thankful for Dinosaur to be around <laughs> this corner and a perfect AoE. Like, you couldn't ask for better positioning for Rapio. He gets yeah. the beads on the left side on Savisify, despite the kill probably wasn't going to happen. And as a result, Rival, teamwork makes the dream work, and they group up immediately at the goal fury in response. And every little opening Jellyfish is giving Rival, they've stripped it away, even getting two more kills after the gold. I mean, this is... <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. Uh, this is one of the more experienced teams in the console world, specifically the European console world. And those are the things. When it comes down to, you know, we can we can talk about a team that's been around for five years and a team that's been around for five months. And the team that's been around for five months can theoretically play just as well, hit their buttons just as well, invade just as well. Sure. It's communication that comes over time and experience in high level play, pro league level play will bring you the, uh, your windows of opportunity can be smaller and smaller. When you first enter the pro league and you are playing against some players, you're trying to figure out, all right, we got two kills. What can we get off of that? When it's your 300th match on a competitive level stage and you get beads in the left side, you immediately know what's going on because you've done this 1,500 times. You know? You've done this over and over again. And Predators knows exactly what was going to happen because <laughs> he's been in that situation probably a couple handful of times as well. Yep. He's always aggressive, always looking to poke out. And with a one level lead, despite being 0-3, he's going to use that to his advantage and bait out these ultimates. And now without Trevor's ultimate, Rival can try to look for something in mid. Dinosaur in some trouble, baiting out a little bit of a fight. But it's Meter Fly that comes through. Dinosaur healing? No. He will get gobbled. Not this time around, not having the beads available quite yet. His sprint was on cooldown as well. So Jamel does get that one execute that he so desperately needs. The rest of Rival can still look to push down mid in a four on four without Oxley having that mid clear, but instead gonna look for some farm on the left side. These purple buffs are looking a little tempting. Dinosaur there giving, him, giving himself up. I thought it was interesting. He went in there kind of Baiting a situation, I thought there was some going to be a win elsewhere on the map. Left side, Visify takes the tower, but now in some trouble. Aegis gives him a moment. Slowed, jumps over the wall. Fought. Oh, Rapio, he, he tried to teleport under that purple buff, but he couldn't get there to chase him down. Also, set is pretty quick with that Kingslayer, but not going to have it available quite yet. Fly and Predators might dive this Oxley very low. 
Predators with the 1v3 on the King Arthur. Really making use of that sustain, man. Red team needs to spread out. They will bring Predators down, but that is... I mean, that's just experience playing against King Arthur. Obviously, the character has been touched. It's not the same as when it came out. We saw a variety literally 1v4, but the character still has that capacity with a glad shield. The thing that, the, one of my favorite things about watching King Arthur kind of come into the meta and then kind of, you know, settle down where now he's just a regular pick is the fact that short was changed, but it was largely player discovery. Players realize that you can't clump three players on top of him because he's going to heal more than you are going to deal. Team Jellyfish did exactly the wrong thing. Clumped up on top of Predators, sent three players there, and he was like, word, power cleave, dude. No problem. And was able to dive that tower. It's if you spread, you're fine. It's hard not to kind of clump up naturally. Like, you could try to do it for the first portion of the fight, but eventually there's going to be certain X factors throughout the course of a team oh, yeah. fight that's going to make you group up. And that's when it's up to Predators to recognize it's go time from there. And normally, when I see a level 13 King Arthur sacrifice his life for a level 11 Poseidon... Oh, that thought, Davey gonna get chased out. We'll slow down as well. Dinosaur with an Earthen Fury gonna help him escape, actually. Oh, Vizify finds it with the use of the relics, though. Beads gets rid of the slow, and it will confirm some of the damage. Vizify, King Slayer done now. Rapio shows up. Left side, stun off the mark. Vizify has help in Jamal the Camel and Trevor. Here comes the ultimate from the Horus. It's going to be a little too late to save the carry. And it will land on the backside, letting Ao Kuang survive. And as I was saying before about that solo lane trade, because Predators was 0-3 when he already died, he's worth no gold, essentially. Yeah. So that kill actually favors our rival because it enables Fly to just keep farming on the Merlin and create this big separation gap. Predators at level 15 with those amount of items, he's basically done his job. He's in a position where he is probably in a very comfortable spot, dominating spot rather, whereas it's up to Oxley to play catch-up crew. And that's going to be a big advantage for Rival as they continue to abuse this level 12 Poseidon that hasn't even backed yet for his second relic. 16, 16 on the clock. Team Rival find themselves up 3,000 gold. Nice jump on to Predators who immunes it with a little movement of his own. No root there. Dinosaur coming through in the clutch. The two players, not as much healing as you would have gotten from three. That early ultimate might have even saved him. Rapio's in the sky, though. Totally here he comes. Looking for a target. Won't find it. Now the turnaround's going to be huge. Trying to go for Jamal. Being able to escape on the bottom side of the Fire Giant. But Fly's damage a little bit too strong. Cutting off the escape. Here's continuation from Rapio. Trevor does a good job of dissuading the opposition. One, two, and four for the support Horus. You'll love to see it. Predators yet again sacrificing his life. But this time... It's not Oxley, it's Jamal. Just as good, in my opinion. This other magical damage dealer sitting at two levels behind Rapio. It's a good way to just try to bully out Jellyfish, but thus far, Rival with only one goal fury uh, of the game. Another kill from Visify. Yeah, I mean, this is what Set does. He just eats you. Visify eaten. Number two. 50, 60 meter foot. Man, that's... I might just call him 50 meter fly. I worked hard enough to learn 50 meter after millimeter. I, I'm sorry. You'll get there. <laughs> well, Team Jellyfish going to pull the Gold Fury. This would tie the game if successful. And Dinosaur takes a gander, but it looks like it will be successful. Prama Fury falls down, gives Team Jellyfish a whole bunch of gold. We'll still trail, but trail by something under 1,000. That's pretty damn close to me. It's looking really good for Visify after those two, after that one double kill and another kill onto Davey earlier on. This build from him is just actually pretty solid because you want to be able to spam your skewers, which is on a very short cooldown, something like seven seconds without CDR, right? So once this item is fully evolved, you're getting 1,050 mana just from that. With 20% CDR between Transcendence and the Mage's Blessing, that seven seconds all of a sudden becomes 5.6 seconds. Wow. Basically, an Osiris sickle strike <laughs> is how often that's coming up. That's absurd. And especially if you have a couple of clones in the heat of a battle, 
it's so easy to spread those clones with Kingslayer. He is damage. It's going through the roof now with the Crusher and the Brawler Speed Stick, the Penetration items. And now he's just going to be a little bit safe now getting the defense. Don't forget, I mean, during Kingslayer, you can also plop a lot more of those clones down. Yeah. That's the whole thing. That's when we talk about Set being a difficult to play character, there's something to be said about clone placement and skewer. Is if I likely to fall here. One ability missed. Two abilities missed. But the third one will be the charm. There's something to be said about all that. Jamal gonna have something to say about this gank on his friend. Eight is out was all the damage on the other side. The blink away. Dots B is good. 13 for team rival. Davey finds his first kill in the contest. Now everybody looking at the left side tower. Trevor in trouble as well. Surrounded. And the wall will just be the inevitability. Inevitability, excuse me. Rapio with another kill. This is the difference between a high caliber team like Rival and one that gets over rumbuctious on the left side of the map. Jellyfish saw some kill opportunities by trying to trade out Visify, but the Aegis buying Davy a bunch of time. The stun from Rapio allows Davy to turn that one completely on its head and Jamal the Camel severely underestimated. I feel like the Musenkopf's damage, the bees just enough to get the kill. And like we see time in and time out before F dot, once Rival has an opening, they stretch it and just burst through that hole, getting the tier one and the tier two. I mean, again, that goes back to our conversation about experience, you know, as soon as they have an opening, they get two towers and that was a small opening. Originally, they got beads from their from the enemy carry, and it walked directly to the first cold tier of the game. I mean, that's you're, you're just able to identify these 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 situations a little bit easier. You've seen them so many times. Pyromancer already down. Fire giant, the only target left. So jellyfish will come in as they see rival looking at the big guy. Whirlpool keeps Zoro in place. That's a decent amount of damage onto Zero, considering he is in the Osiris passive with 16% physical mitigation, 8% magical. His health pool should have been a little bit lower there, but thankfully, this tanky Osiris able to do everything that he needs to, even trying to escape that with the ultimate. Dinosaur up far. Davey is here, and this could be a bad spot for Team Rival. They're only up 6,000. So Visify around the back could be devastating. The assassin carry finds his way out on the left side, now pushing forward, and Rapio gonna go to the sky. Set will re-enter, but right now Team Rival have a limited amount of time to do the dirty work. One player gonna go down, two players gonna go down, and Vizify shows up, but too little, too late. Slow the beast swarm, not predicting the juke there, so two for nothing though, expecting Rival to go for a very early fire giant. Look at Rapio zoning though against Camel. Yep, here it is, 22 on the clock. And Team Rival are going to all but confirm this. Zoro is here, just kidding. Fire Giant goes the way of the blue team. E, Z, P, Z. Yeah, not much they can do there. After Zoro got poked down in that range, the dive from Rapio in the back line basically zoned everyone else away. And not only that, Visify was a non-factor. He was spotted out early before that fight happened, and he could never find the flank from there on out. He tried to go in, the war vision control from Rival a little bit too good, still holding on to the Kingslayer throughout, and that's a red buff level 20 set. <laughs> that was a five on four, basically, throughout that fight. Absolutely. Scary stuff. Yeah. And now with Fire Giant for three minutes, Rival can easily love this. start plucking away the towers, and I this is what this. you have to do. When you know a team is backing to buy after the Fire Giant, there's a very small window to confirm your own Fury. And Oni Fury is one of the <laughs> biggest! And Rapio just goes, let me tell you about my hammer. That's not an easy steal with a hammer. It does less damage to minions as opposed to doing more damage to gods. Not the highest damaging ability, although this, this is a level 20 Thor with quite a bit of power, mind you. Let's take a look at the damage numbers, excuse me, Doug. We'll see exactly on that Mjolnir what happens with number one. Rapio doing damage here. 210, 30% of the physical power. How much power do you think he's got? About um, 50? 
Oh, he's got right yeah, 347 with the Fire Giant buff. What's 30% of 347? 30% of 347 is about so 68, 102. Add that to 210. 312. And then on the way back, it does 50%, right? Or 80%. So how much damage did it do to the gold for you? Totally 312 plus, uh, hold on, 62 minus 312. Yeah. 260. Okay. Plus 312. All right. 572. There it is. 572 damage I'm, I'm, I'm probably wrong somewhere there. There's definitely like a miscalculation I did. Give or take 40 damage. <laughs> a little asterisk. Left side, no asterisk on the team fight. Trevor already half HP. Grandy's going to pop for the defenders. And the dinosaurs will go on the side of the good guys. 19, 20 predators with a double kill. And Dinosaur on the backside trying to protect his mid lane carry. Visify here trying to fight the good fight, but it's all about Dinosaur and Fly. Carry gets one, but that's it. Double kill for Davy, a double kill for Predators. And into the throne room they go. Team Rival, 25 exactly on the clock. That hammer on the Titan will do about 500 damage, give or take 40. And it's enough to win the game. Totally. Wow. It looked close, actually. About 10 minutes ago, it looked really close once uh, that double kill happened from Visify. It looked like there was a big power spike coming through where the set was going to start carrying the team fights. But that over ambitious dive on the left side, I believe, where Jamal tries to revenge kill mm. once Visify died, that's when things started to slip up. Two towers from Rival, they were able to control the game throughout. Rapier was 8-0-5 at, oh, I think, 16 minutes. That really was the key for me. I think Set could have been level 20 earlier, and it still wouldn't have mattered. Sure. Rapio's control of this game was very important. He was able to come in the early game and make some plays. In the mid game, kind of stall until we got to the late game, and then bring it home. Rapio and the team celebrate their one victory. They need another to take the set. We'll be right back. Respawn, the official gaming chair of the Smite Console League. Welcome back, everybody. Rival end up taking game one, but it wasn't quite as clean as I think a lot of us were expecting. Aggro joined by Taco here mm -hmm. on the desk. I mean, look, 25-minute victory on paper looks like an easy win. But Team Jellyfish really did hold their own for a lot of that early game. A lot of back and forth disputes between these two teams, but Rival ultimately coming out on top, largely due to the fact that they just remembered it's the objective game, but we're really all about. And that control that they had was just a, a little bit too much after the fact. Also, I just think the, the composition that Rival got in the drafting phase just ends up being a little bit too strong. I mean, that, the... the Merlin for Fly was insane. Rapio gets the Thor after the second ban phase. I just feel like Team Jellyfish, if they clean up the picks and bans, might have a better shot. It was also kind of tough for that Kraken to have much of an impact, considering that a lot of times it was just being interfered with because of the Terra's blessing. Really tough to try and find all of your DPS in that instant. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you take a look at those post-game stats, and it looks pretty easy when it looks when you come down to rivals. Rapio's 8-0, 7-2-9 for Fly, I mean, that is the stuff that you're looking for out of that mid-jungle combo that has been so potent for so long. Reunited once again, and certainly looking like they're right back in the saddle. 
really wasn't a whole lot for, for Team Jellyfish to do. Rapio just could not be shut down. Had so much peel from Dinosaur constantly being there to back him up. And 60-meter yep. fly was just there to expend damage. And now the set ADC for Visify on the other side didn't go too poorly. He overall, I think, played pretty well on this pick. And Davey definitely had his own fair share of struggles over there in duo. It was just unfortunate that it didn't really seem as though Team Jellyfish was able to group up in time to try and play off of that set a little bit more uh, efficiently. I mean, Set is one of those gods that can be really versatile. You can put him in the jungle, ADC, solo. We've seen some mid-set every once in a while. So I think this is a pick that you have to be ready for. Rival, like I said, they got a great draft that time around. We'll see if they can do it again here in game two. But Team Jellyfish, I think they did some things that Rival has to take into consideration as well. Well, Rival being in that second pick position as well, probably going to look to take some early shots uh, before Jellyfish has a chance to maybe even look at picking up the set again since there was so much success for Visify in that long lane. But Chrono is going to be taken away first and foremost from Jellyfish, not trying to take any chances with Fly there in mid. No, I think that's fine. Davey as well played a lot of that Chronos, but I feel like you have to do something about the Merlin that Fly piloted in game one. You either have to take it yourself or you have to ban it. Team Jellyfish gonna ban the Isis, another god that you kind of have to take care of when flies on the other side. That's what makes Rival so strong. They have so many god so many different players who play different styles that you have to really account for. You can't give Predators whatever he wants. You can't give Ri you know, Rapio or Fly all their pick of the litter or else they'll really punish you. And for the most part, the bans are more or less the same. Jellyfish gonna take away that Jean Kui also, which is I think a little bit odd considering that they're in that first pick position. Maybe look to try and select the Jean Kui for your own flexibility options. But if Team Jellyfish just don't really have that in their ADC or mid lane god pools, then I can still understand why they'd want to keep that pick locked out from Rival. But Thor could be a possible first pick selection here for Jellyfish. It would prevent Rapio from being able to run it back after such a strong game one performance. But it looks like Visify is trying to run back his fairly strong game one performance with that set first pick. Now Rapio and the rest Fire of Rival, yeah, Merlin's Fire. guaranteed at this point, right? You have to take Merlin for Fly because he played so well on it. You can go Merlin Thor right here and set yourself up for success. You can go with King Arthur in this slot if you want to. You've got a lot of different options. It will be the Horus likely for Dinosaur. I, I like this Horus pickup for Rival. I think that the setup and initiation is fantastic for that Merlin. Almost uh, able to accomplish it in the same sense as the Terra, also bringing a little bit of that team sustain as well. But what I'm really keeping an eye out here for is I think that Rival don't expect Team Jellyfish to look for a Thor pick themselves. So they might even be safe to just hold on to that selection. Way. Clearly not. I mean, now you can pick it here if you're worried about it getting banned in the second phase. And I think that is wise if that's a pick that Rival really, really feels like they need. But maybe they don't feel like they need it. I mean, Ganesh is one of those picks that can give Thor some trouble, interrupt him mid hammer teleport or during the spin, though not as much of a deal as it used to be. So instead, Rival's going to go a different direction and pick up the Kabraken. This is a nice little flex pick. I think it can go to solo still for Predators, or it could go to the jungle for Rapio. It could definitely be in the jungle still for Rapio as a possibility, but the Humbots, so Rival clearly taking notice of some of that AoE setup that Team Jellyfish was looking for. Darmic Pillars and that World Serpent already so great at displacing those back lines that set would probably want to try and work through. So a Jellyfish, I think, have made some really strong adjustments to make Visify stand out if he is on this set pick yet again. But it's it's still up in the air for now, Aggro. There's a chance that this set could be intended for the jungle. Yeah, it is true. Very flexible so far for Jellyfish. I don't disagree with you there. As Thor is banned by Jellyfish this time around. I think that's a wise call. Rival kind of split the difference and go for a couple junglers just in case this set is going into the lane like it did in game one. That seems like a, a reasonable bet to me when Visify played pretty well. If rivals still want Davy on a oh, hunter, hey, then Jing Wei might just be Number the best one. bet. Fail not having been such a popular item as well. Synchronizes incredibly well with Jing Wei's kit since she has that crit chance already off of the explosive bolts. But I'm looking more so towards that airstrike, towards the agility, all of those tools nice for the survivability aspect that's going to cause a lot of troubles for this set because you want to be aggressive. You want to look for that first blood opportunity. But Chernobog, it might not even be in the Hunter role. This could be mm. a Chernobog mid. Yeah, I think that's pretty likely, actually, at this point, especially with the Ratatosker locked in. That looks to me like set ADC, Chernobog mid, Ratatosker jungle. A lot of global presence here for Jellyfish's composition. You've got the Chernobog, you've got the Rat. Yorm obviously can traverse a lot of that map with that World Serpent ultimate. 
I like Jellyfish's comp much more this time around. I agree with you there, Agro, because I think it's also playing to Jellyfish's strengths because it's not so much the early to mid-game portions that they struggle with against rivals. It's really just surrounding that objective fight. Brought a Tosker and Turnabog going to bring in a lot more team fight potential as well. Rival trying to find the 2-0 victory here up against Team Jellyfish. We'll see if they're able to do it right here, right now. Let's throw it to Tom for the cat. I'll catch it. Team Jellyfish going up against Team Rival. It's Team Tom and Team Tolly here. Hey. How you doing, buddy? You know what? After that last game, feeling a little spicy. Did you check your math? I did not. I'm I gonna, did. I'm going to look at the VOD, actually. I checked your math. Was it right? It was. Nice. I didn't check it, but I just want to gas you up, Tolly. Nice. By the way, didn't shout him out in game number one. At NA Cameraman on Twitter, you can find our very own Doug. Observer, I'm very proud to work next to. He's going to bring us all the action today, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, every single day you catch mine. Visify one more time in the set. I think this is a very important run back. This was one of the only things that really worked, so do it again. That said, I love the switch up for Jamal here. Tried to do the out Kwong, realized, and realizing that you're outclassed is a big deal. Beads popped early. I don't know if this fight's going to go well. Ouch. Jamal wanting to really secure that blue buff. Uses the beats, but the body blocks. Love it. Out of Zoro. Golf clap to that play right there. And Jamal really wanted that blue buff. If he got <laughs> it, he was going to be at level two. So it made yeah. sense as to why he committed to it. So at the same time, I was just I was just complimenting the, the, the thought process here. And I still will. Got an assist. Good for him. Jamal tries really driving the Al Kwong. You really have to be the, the the apex predator, the alpha male on the on the battlefield there, in order to play that type of character that is just hunting players down. Now that didn't work. Rapio really ran the game. Semi global, going from lane to lane at his own pace, right? Jamal picks up the semi global to either answer if Rapio goes something similar. I just like this choice a little bit better in general for the jungle. It's just a safer choice. Like, you're going to be able to peel for yourself, yeah. run away for yourself, engage of the aggression off of Rival now that they don't have the semi-global pressure. And that's going to be a good look. Rapio wanting to get a little frisky. Misjudged the potential that was there as Jamal does duck under safety. Still without beads for another 80 seconds. And that's the mindset that Rival are considering on being aggressive. So when I'm looking here at... Uh what Team Rival have brought to the table, a very different composition here than we saw the last time. Dinosaur going to be on the setup god of Horus. Fly will reprise the role, sure. But Rapio, I think, is the major difference. Here we're going to see Divi get some pot shots, but unlikely to kill. Rapio stepping away from the Thor and into the Kabracken. Certainly a different choice. Trevor in trouble here. Dinosaur going to go for it. No confirmation from the mid lane mage there. As you were talking about Rapios, Kabrakin versus his Thor, same idea except different element. One's physical, one's magical. Rapios still providing the burst damage that he wants out of his team, but it's more about controlling the movement from Jellyfish. It's a different way of controlling between the walls, which is going to be very similar of locking down this the set if his Sandstorm is down, the Chernabog, the Ratatasker, Zoro, if he doesn't have that World Serpent, is going to be a sitting duck. But outside of the burst damage from Rapio, you got to love the sustain from Rival, right? Like Guan Yu, Horus, self sustain from Davy, that's going to be building into Devil Gloves, I'm assuming. Going to be hard to lock down Rival, expecting Jellyfish to go for some anti healing sooner rather than later. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong there, totally. The anti heal will certainly come into play. In, in play once Guan starts rotating, but you've got a number of other players that are going to go ahead and uh, be able to lifesteal, for example. Visify here in the long lane one more time, going to be building you know, that power. Boots first, though, and I think that's important. Set as a melee character needs that, that movement speed, both for offense and defense. A hunter can kind of get away with prioritizing a stacking item. Usually we see Devo Gloves or Transcendence built before Boots, but here Davey actually going to go for the Ninja Tabby right off the bat. If Davey was rushing Devo Gloves, I would expect Visify to follow suit and get the Transcendence rushed instead, but when a Hunter goes for mobility, they're going to run you down if you don't have that mobility to match it. So Visify playing a little bit more safe, making sure he's not going to give anything up in the 1v1. Jellyfish grabbed the Harpies, but the fight rival won after the fact. 
Trevor stuck, stuns. Trevor, shell is good for the moment. Body blocks, not good enough. One more shot, who's got it? No one. Wow. Literally one health is Trevor to escape that one. Rival still getting the better end of the trades. They'll visify under his own tier one tower. Davey not actually committing the damage. An air, like one basic attack and an airstrike might have been able to seal the deal there. I agree. But still going to deny him a bunch of minions under that tower. And that is going to be large. When you're rooting for Team Rival, you're rooting for, or I mean, when you're rooting for a team, really what you want is the experience difference in the early game. It's always fun to kind of see the Gold Fury go down at six minutes, but really the kills here in lane, whether the actual kill or the totally TKO, just forced out of lane, having to go home on your own terms, sometimes is worse. And you're just sitting there looking at, well, now he's level seven yep. and I'm level six. And as long as that continues, the experience lead can be the more devastating number. Yeah, Visify, once he returns to that lane, he only got two archers. I was looking at the mini-map there. Zoro trading out ultimates with Predators. And that's going to add up eventually for Visify. Like, if he continues to get bullied like that and only get two out of six minions, yeah. not only is he going to be, uh, like, half a level, one level behind, but it'll be two to three, and he won't have that same advantage like last game. Well, Trevor's going to start the party here near the Harpies. Doesn't grab Dinosaur on the laser, though. And because of that, Fly is able to turn it around. One for the money and two for the show. Dinosaur getting the secondary kill. Trevor right there, I think, had the right idea, Anatoly. Just lackluster execution. Oh, the knockup, but it actually brings Visify away from the airstrike, and that's how impactful that Kingslayer is. Even though Visify had less of a health pool before starting that engage, that lifesteal and the attack speed from proccing all those hits is allowing him to start swinging those trades, especially on every fourth hit. You're exploding for a little bit of damage. You're applying another new clone so that the skewers are hitting harder. Nice little recognition out of Visify. All of that's why we keep seeing him in different positions, right? The jungle is one thing, but we see him in the lane. It's a short lane because he can be built into tank while still doing damage. Kingslayer and another, a number of other things just give him numbers without necessarily having a lot of power. So Set can kind of work there. And then with respect to playing in the carry role on the long side, Set destroys you in the 1v1 because of, again... Everything you said, the heal, the speed, etc., etc., etc. So you can put him in the solo lane to have this nasty tank guy that kind of kills late game, or you can put him in the carry role, which is where we first started seeing set really be effective, where he just wins the 1v1 against the enemy carry and is rarely punished. That said, here could be one of those rare opportunities. Horace clicking left side will deal with the carry. Mid lane, we've got a whole different situation as it's a 2v2. Oxley takes down Fly. And Oxley takes down Rapio. Two kills here for Team Jellyfish, and they'll get the red buff invade. But off screen, Davey wins the 2v1 and puts down Set. So a two for one cross the map here. Team Rival get an invade, Jellyfish get an invade, and now a secondary fight. But it's a three on two favoring out Jellyfish, wrapping around the backhand side is gonna be Oxy, but he got there a little bit too late. The bait was a little bit too long, but still taking out Davey, slowing out Dinosaur. Oxy looking for a second. There's a dash. Dinosaur is gonna be fine. Zero death still for the support, Horus. Rapio showing his face. But that be that, an extended team fight, wow. Just goes to show you how important that third member from Rival is. Dinosaur, last time when Rival got that two for nothing, it was because it was a three-on-three -three fair fight with Dinosaur. Right. Without Dinosaur, because he was ganking the left side, killing Visify, it was Jellyfish that was able to turn that on its head. Despite how effective Rapio is at locking down multiple members, mm -hmm. there wasn't that additional control with the knockup, with the penetration after the fracture. So Dinosaur kind of evaluated that it was worth fighting on the left side. Jellyfish pushing forward past the red buff, abusing that positioning. Gotta love it. Strengthens our resolve. Positioning one of the key parts of staying, uh, staying healthy at a competitive level, down to where in the lane you're standing. Where, you know, sometimes when you say positioning, people are like, yeah, you know, I gotta be in the, uh, my side of the lane. I go, no, how far away from you from the left wall? That's true, too. <laughs> you yeah. know, that, that's really, when you talk about high-level positioning, you know, you're thinking about, 
you know, Yanis and how far you got to go to portal or on her and if you are an impale range of a wall, etc. Both soul laners baiting the other one out, but Predators, I think, not going to be favored too much in that one. Two ultimates, though. Well, actually, I guess three in total being used off of that exchange. Oh, Jabal. No target? Nah. Can't love that. Zoro going to get three-man ganked here. Jamal could have found so much more. Oh, man. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. Davey going to fall down. Nice play there. Solo kill Ganesh. to the Ganesh. You love to see it. I said before, Magical Trevor, ever so clever. Got to watch out, buddy. Ganesh mains take note right there. That's how you got to kill between the Tier 1 and the Tier 2. <laughs> Far enough away out of Visify that was getting that purple buff to get that kill. And in that solo lane, I don't think Jamal wanted to dive the Tier 1 tower and to land. I guess he could have landed onto Dinosaur yeah. if he really wanted to. There was a whole scrum. I, I Realistically, Jamal ran out of time. That could have been it. I... I, I, I... I'd have to see a replay to, to really, but from what I need, I think he just ran out of time. Need to turn around, land on the team fight, get the knock up. That is a great situation for Team Jellyfish if they convert, but they don't. Now Team Rival looking for another one. Trevor caught up. Rapio here. Now just saw went a different direction. Hmm. Yeah. Miscommunication there. Yeah, if they had Fly there, that's a kill. Yep. But without that magical follow-up damage... Trevor didn't even need the remove obstacle dash to get away from that one. He just basic attacked it three times. It's like, okay. Easy. Try again next time. <laughs> just walk out of the trap. Five to five. Tied up here at about 30,000 gold. I'm also not in love with Rapio's build. It's not really cost effective. Like, if you're going for a Kabrakan jungle, normally you want, like, Dynasty Plate Helmet, Stone of Binding. These are the items that really help you get that early damage off. I like it. I, li I like the mentality here. Um, anytime you're going into a mage jungle and you want to go damage-oriented, 100 power has to be your first item. Bancroft is usually what comes to mind, but I think Dezo certainly works here. It's also going to give you some penetration, which is paramount. Uh, the pen boots is going to work out as well. Third item is really what I'm curious. I want to see if he goes into the hybrid items like we normally see, or if we're going to get some of that good old-fashioned Polynomicon action oh my goodness. that we used to see. And that's a really fun item to pick up whenever you have the opportunity. But I'm not hating on Spear of Desolation. I think it's a great item to have. You know, 10% CDR, 100 power to be able to burst down multiple people is good. Oh, yeah. It's just not as cost effective as, let's say, the Dynasty with the Stone of Binding. You, you, barely, you barely spend more money to get those two items. Sure. A L little less power, but much more survivability at the same time. This is a beautiful play here by Team Jellyfish. I love the way that they were able to tank that in Trevor's lasers. But they don't convert. They do get the kill on the dinosaur who sacrifices his life for. Zoro here pushing up mid. Rapio stunned out under the tower. Trevor misses the dash. It do not matter. Oxley Jr. gets the kill. Three in a row for the mid lane Chernabog. A great start. A great start coming through. Oxley needs to get off this kind of a start because his damage is going to start melting this gold fury. And last time it was Rival that were able to confirm the objective this early on. Jellyfish now with matters in their own hands. That's it. Yeah, easy. Rival nowhere to be located. That's just not something that Rival were re ready for. They don't have the vision on the actual objective itself. They have vision around it. And because of that, Jellyfish now take a 1,000 gold lead. But what can they really do with this lead is like what I have to keep asking these teams because there was points in time when Jellyfish looked confident enough to be tied with them, to look for the plays, but they always seem to be giving something else in return. And if they just group up, then I have a lot of confidence for Jellyfish. But once they start making those 1v1 plays that just go south because of a certain thing that they miscalculated, that's when Rival are going to start punishing you. See, really what I saw, Anatoly, is, is Jellyfish in game number one kind of making these moves and then finding themselves in a position where they were just too slow. Mm -hmm. They get they make a cool play, but Rival are able to respond in a matter of moments because they, they just got there really fast. Uh, Jellyfish, on the other hand, now with the Red Tasker, now with the Chernabog, now, uh, I think they just have a better opportunity to 
finish what they start and get out before Team Rival can answer. I think that Gold Fury is a great example of, of, of kind of what I'm getting at. So with that in mind, you're exactly right. But if Team Jellyfish can do what they did in game number one but faster, then it's up to Rival to kind of figure out what's going on. And who's going to be that target? It's going to have to be Visify potentially to win the 1v1s on the left side to open up that door. Maybe Jamal on the global Ratatasker to see if somebody from Rival is out of position. Predators always seems to like to fight in the solo lane, so that could be a target. But at level 15, Guan Yu, not the easiest to kill, especially with 30% CDR. I think it's going to be all about mid lane. Wow. Nice job. Big Worm able to get on in there. 3-0-3 oh, for the Slavic God here, man. I mean, Chernobog, that's the guy, and he's he's doing it. By Visify being left to his own devices, he squeezes out one tower, looking for a second one while Rival gonna give it up, going for the Pyromancer, but Davey has back, should be able to defend that left side. There it is, Team Jellyfish with a no hot damn steal. Way. Jamal the Camel doing what he's supposed to, carrying and lifting the game up. Nice little steal, and Davey. Oh no. The Aegis not good enough. He didn't even need to Aegis, Tom. He was one basic attack away from finding the kill. Oh well. Visify takes the left side tier two tower. <laughs> and then 60 meter fly rains on his parade, quite literally. It's fine, he wanted to back anyway. In fact, if anything, it saves him time. To go back to base to buy? No, it's 16 minutes here. So he's going to sit out for, for like 40 seconds. Like he needed to get a drink. It was what it really there was. There it is. There it is. So The admin wouldn't let him pause. Yeah. So he takes the death. We're kidding around here, obviously, but Team Jellyfish is at 4,000 gold in the lead. You know, I, I, I understand what you're getting at when you're like, yeah, we've seen these teams get gold here, but what are you going to do? Yeah. That's what you're going to do. And this is impressive. And honestly, you know... Jamal the Camel gets a steal. Honestly, a lot less about Jamal and more about Visify. I agree. That's <laughs> 2,000 gold on the left just from the towers because he won that 1v1. A slight misplay from Davey. I think if he holds on to the Jaegers and just continues to basic attack, even though he did miss about one, maybe two basic attacks, he still had a window to get the kill regardless. His positioning was good, being able to dance around that persistent gust for long enough, and that's... And a fun little matchup to observe <laughs> between the set and yeah. the Xingwei because of that one little circle on the ground that changes it entirely. Just everything goes differently. Here, everything goes differently because, I don't know, Jamal misses everything. Uh, so so Davy, Davy able to kind of uh, find a way out. Well, this 4,000 gold lead staying intact. Visify versus Davey one more time. Visify with a seven with a level 17 access. Davey level 16 access. Here's a blink forward from Dinosaur. This should be it. He His activated control. the King Slayer for the movement speed, Jamal. slowing down everyone else. Jamal looking for the counter engage. That's a really good play from Jamal, even if they don't fight here, but it looks like they will. Mid lane makes the rotation. Horus got the moves. That's true between Through the Cosmos, Living Nightmare, and even to the sky. A lot of ultimates being exchanged there. Visify having to use the Kingslayer defensively just to get that 25% movement speed. And I thought that Visify was going to be able to cleanly disengage considering he still had the blink. He just wasn't expecting Dinosaur to blink engage there. Well, there's a little bit of engagement from Trevor. Team Jellyfish want this Oni Fury. Rival do too. And they're here for it. Zoros down to 75 and will use the ultimate. The chase is on. Visify wants it, but he gets denied. There's this trap here for set. One more shot, and Davey has it over the top. Davey safe and sound behind a tier two. There's going to be the continuation of Rival falling back underneath the tier two. Visify died. Team Rival didn't, and they're still shying away from this objective. A little low in the health department, having to back Davey using that Jingwei passive to get back into it. I don't expect Jellyfish to be able to secure this Oni Fury. In fact, it's going to be Rival probably forcing the issue instead. Yeah, I don't even want to see Jellyfish here anymore. I think this is a non-fight. The fight they should not take or look for, but the Oni Fury does have a large impact on the game. Here comes Predators down to 80. 
They're just dancing around to buy time, allowing v Visify to respawn potentially, doing whatever they can, slowing down Rival. G Oni Fury started, not just the Gold Fury. It's going to be started by Rival. Trevor's suit ultimate kind of blown, and Oxley able to get Dinosaur off the bat. Team Rival on the bad side of the team fight. Zoro chased down by Rapio. He gets hit by all the damage in the world. And that's kill number nine. Some hybrid items, items coming out for Rapio, but the Spear of Dezo certainly smacking. Oh, absolutely is. And now with Dynasty Plate Helmet having a little bit more defense and resiliency to make that play happen. Oni being looked at, but Visify looking for the flank, but he gets spotted out. Here he's gonna die. Can Rival make it back to Oni Fury in time? And it looks like yes, because it's been leashed. Jamal goes into the sky. And you're gonna look on the right side. Davey is out of there. Time down, and again, Jamal comes on out. That one I don't mind. That's a satellite, though. You get the information. Yeah. Oxley, though, forced to use the beats, but he's still going to die regardless. Predators, too much damage to handle with his level 18 Guan Yu. Guan Yu, baby. Rival take the team fight. Three players on the bench. Jamal without an ultimate. The only fury will go down as the world serpent on the right side of the map, which is the wrong side of the map. And Team Rival pick up the gold, Oni, and tie game. I mean, look at the graphs. 3,000 gold, it was in Jellyfish's favor. 5,000 experience was in Jellyfish's favor. Now, everything's tied in even Steven because yet again, Visify with two deaths in a row in about a minute's time because his beads was used in the previous encounter and he gets caught out in Rival. You give him an inch, they're going to try to take the Fire Giant with it. This is Rival looking for, honestly, I would have said a fight, but the FG already almost down 21 and a half minutes here, and Rival going for the fences. Oxley going to be rooted underneath the Fire Giant nonsense, and there's the trap. Rapio with the clap. Down goes Oxley version 2, and Zoro in trouble on the back line. Up front, Horus will try and help out. Dinosaur separates, Jamo low, Rapio with two. And if Fly can just catch the rascal on the right side. The minions are gonna do it, and now Fly gets the last hit. No minions required there. Visify a little bit too fast to chase down that mid lane, but how unfortunate is it for a Chernabog using Living Nightmare to land on a Fire Giant knockoff. That's the... Because <laughs> that's exactly what happened for Oxley. My man goes in thinking he's about to turn this around and be the hero that his team needs, and then that sixth player... Boing. ...shutting him out. <laughs> Usually we've seen the, like, blink into stun, yep. you know, blink into nonsense, where the player in the other shot is like, Will, I didn't plan that, but I'll take it. Yeah. I feel like it's the same right there for Oxley. Blinks in from the other side of the map, quite yep. literally. And the Fire Giant's just laughing at him, man. This time around, it's Trevor trying to see if he can do any kind of steal this time. 25. He's going to get caught under the Tremor, silences it out. 10. Visify, looking to get a little bit closer. Five. Breaks in. Rival take it, no problem. Yet again, another pick because Visify had to hard commit without any real vision inside the pit. You have to make that kind of a gamble. And now Jellyfish, all of a sudden, this tied game is blown out of proportion and they're going to have to play defense. This is exactly Team Rival just going, you believe in yourself, mate? <laughs> this is this is the Remember the Titans episode. Team Rival tied up. And I mean, I get, you know, Team Rival is... No backstory, but they're tied up and they just go, yeah, we can just do a fire giant. And then somebody in, in, in comms goes, mate, we don't have a lead. Did you realize that? And they go, it doesn't matter. We can still do it. Do your best Dwayne Johnson impersonation and say it doesn't matter if we have a lead. It doesn't matter if we have a lead, Anatoly. Right. It doesn't matter if we have the gold. It doesn't matter if we have the experience. I mean, they have the experience. Does that sound good? Well, I mean, in the game. Well, out of game. They have a lot of experience out of game. How much experience do you think you get for casting a set? Like, if, if real like world... Like, if there was a number value behind it? Yeah. Trevor in trouble. Like, a whole... Oof. Maybe 420? Ouch. Trevor tries to drop the box, but he's just going to go down 
That could be the beginning of the end. And see, one, Whoa. Of, one of the things that... Oh, man. One of the things... Nice play there. This was a tight game. Rival demanded Fire Giant and took it. And Jellyfish could have defended into it. They get picked and caught. And that's what loses them the game. I don't even think the Fire Giant lost in the game, Anatoly. I really think it was just the fact that Trevor gets picked up, so does Oxley and Zoro, and that's kind of it. Yeah, around that goal, Fury Invisified, dying twice, didn't really help their matters at all. This set ADC had potential. He got two towers on the left side after that solo kill, but and even Jamel stealing away that Pyromancer was a good start, but it just wasn't enough. 25 minutes, and that will do it. Team Rival find the win. They're gonna get a couple of kills after the fact. 20 in total. Team Rival up a whole bunch of gold. Find the victory. And that's very impressive when a team is tested defensively like Rival was through a small portion of the game and battled their way into it. I love the way Rapio on the Cabracken started to utilize those walls mm -hmm. effectively against Visify, made it impossible for him to chase anyone down. Willing to go into the uh, the pure glass cannon build on the Guardian. Something that you don't see often, but mm -hmm. certainly has a place We'll take a look at the numbers here. And Rapio, 3, 2, and 12. So a little bit obvious that he got to play Setup Man later. We did get that poly. Yeah, and I did ask for that Stone of Binding and yep. Dynasty Plate Helmet. It just came after the Spear of Desolation. So still a very good build throughout the end game. It just could have been a little bit more effective early game. Zoro, I think, also had a decent showing for his team on this Jormungandr solo lane. Game two and game one. I kind of like what Zoro happened, yeah. uh, which is interesting because Team Rival, I think, obviously paid more attention to Zoro mm -hmm. in game two. That's why he was a little bit more kind of deal dealt with. Yeah, there was just so much pressure coming through into that lane as well. I think Jamil dying at level one on his blue buff hurt his potential. I could see the, uh, the mindset there, but then the body blocks coming through to at least answer back one for one was important and required. Rival taking this one in just two games. A fantastic throwback to the way that we're used to seeing them. They're still on top. We'll be right back after this.